Yes, yes, yes. We are now on Article 11 of Question 13 in the Prima Pars of St. Thomas Aquinas' Summa Theologica. Article 11 asks whether this name, He Who Is, is the most proper name of God. Objection 1. It seems that this name, He Who Is, is not the most proper name of God. For this name, God, is an incommunicable name. But this name, He Who Is, is not an incommunicable name. Therefore, this name, He Who Is, is not the most proper name of God. Th Thomas's reply to Objection 1. This name, He Who Is, is the name of God more properly than this name, God, as regards its source, namely, existence, and as regards the mode of signification and consignification, as said above. But as regards the object intended by the name, this name God is more proper, as it is imposed to signify the divine nature, and still more proper is the tetragrammaton, imposed to signify the substance of God itself, incommunicable and, if one may so speak, singular. Objection 2. Further, Dionysus says in his divine names that the name of good excellently manifests all the processions of God, but it, but it especially belongs to God to be the universal principle of all things. Therefore, this name good is supremely proper to God, and not this name, he who is. Thomas's reply to objection 2. This name, good, is the principal name of God insofar as he is a cause, but not absolutely. For existence, considered absolutely, comes before the idea of cause. Objection 3. Further, every divine name seems to imply relation to creatures. For God is known to us only through creatures. But this name, he who is, imports no relation to creatures. Therefore, this name, he who is, is not the most applicable to God. Thomas's reply to Objection 3. It is not necessary that all the divine names should import relation to creatures, but it suffices that they be imposed from some perfections flowing from God to creatures. Among these, the first is existence, from which comes this name, he who is. On the contrary, it is written that when Moses asked, If they should say to me, What is his name? What shall I say to them? The Lord answered him, Thus shalt say thou say to them, He who is hath sent me to you. Exodus. Book 3, verses 13. I mean, verses 13 and 14. Therefore this name, he who is, most properly belongs to God. I answer that this name, he who is, is most properly applied to God for three reasons. First, because of its signification, for it does not signify form, but simply existence itself. Hence, since the existence of God is his essence itself, which can be said of no other, it is clear that among other names this one specially denominates God, for everything is denominated by its form. Secondly, on account of its universality, for all other names are either less universal or, if convertible with it, add something above it at least in idea. Hence, in a certain way, they inform and determine it. Now our intellect cannot know the essence of God itself in this life, as it is in itself. But whatever mode it applies in determining what it understands about God, it falls short of the mode of what God is in himself. Therefore, the less determinate the names are, and the more universal and absolute they are, the more properly they can be applied to God. Hence, Damascene says that he who is is the principle of all names applied to God, for comprehending all in itself, it contains existence itself as an infinite and indeterminate sea of substance. Now, by any other name, some mode of substance is determined, whereas this name, he who is, determines no mode of being, but is indeterminate to all, and therefore it denominates the infinite ocean of substance.
Thirdly, from its consignification, for it signifies present existence, and this above all properly applies to God, whose existence knows not past nor future, as Augustine says in his De Trinitate. So that is Article 11, Question 13, the Prima Paris of St. Thomas Aquinas' Summa Theologica. In the next video, we will go over Article 12. Don't miss out.